Hello and welcome to this video. Today I want to show you the new update for the LEGO Mindstorm software, which allows for machine learning and you can use it to discover sounds or images or things on images. But first I want to talk about a few other things that came with this update. And first of all, there is a new update for the community tab and here you can build or you can find instructions and projects for models for the LEGO Mindstorm set which were made by fans and not by LEGO. And there are a few already. Some have been older and some have been in the software for a while. But there are a few new ones including Lightplane, um, Lily and also this shuttle simulator. So you can build these if you build the official models and want to do something more. Next, there have been a few new blocks. You can find them with the plus tab and the more sensor blocks. There's also the machine learning blocks, which we will take a look at afterwards. But there are new sensor blocks. And you can find them here on the side. And first of all, you can set the mode of the color sensor to default or ambient. And that way you can control the lights of the color sensor. You can either turn them on by using default or ambient by, to turn them off. And then you can uh, check the ambient light. And basically in the past there was always the internal light source of the color sensor activated when you used it. There's a white LED around the sensor and that's activated at all times. But now with the ambient light, you can turn it off and then react to the ambient light. So for example, you can check if it's light outside, if there's sun outside or if it's dark outside or maybe if there's a lamp flashing into the sensor or stuff like that. So that's what this ambient light mode is for. You can of course always use the normal color detection mode to use a line follower or to check the color of a surface. And then there's also this device type lock, which you can use to detect what sensor is connected to a port or what, which motor. And it basically returns a value depending on the type of the sensor. So for example, I'm not sure about the actual values, but maybe the color sensor returns 36 and the forest sensor returns 46 or something like that. You can check that out. You can print the value to the screen with the write block and then you can check the device ID of the device that you want to use yourself. And then there have been a few updates for this remote block because now we've got monitor blocks and you can use them to output values. There are four different types of monitors, a vertical bar, a horizontal bar, a value monitor and a circular monitor. And also now there are labels which you can use to write something or to show some graphics. But now to the machine learning. I already connected a webcam to this. Again, it works for images and it works for music or sounds. You might have to check it on your own, which works well and which doesn't work well. And first of all, for machine learning, you have to create a library which can differentiate between different things. So for this example, I've got the first or the picture model one. And I can take a look at, into that. And it contains different classes for everything that can be discovered by the model. So for example, I've got a part for a part separator and a part for a simple brick. And I've made images of them, of different things, of different perspectives. And with that, I could make uh, samples or I could make a class. I've also made a brick class. You can, or you might want to use different backgrounds or different light sources or stuff like that. If you want to make a really good model, this is basically uh, just for an example. And now the image detection works and the software can detect what's in front of it. So for example, it doesn't know my hand, 
So it returns a random value, but I can also put a part separator in front of it. And now it discovers the part separator for 100%. Or I can put a brick into it and it discovers the brick with 41 or with 90%. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Again, it also depends on the classes, how good they are, how many different images they contain, and how good the images are for the purpose. You might have to try around with the values a bit. And you can also react to these values in your model or with your model in your project by using the machine learning blocks. And here you can check uh, which prediction is it is, what the value of the prediction it is, if the prediction is a specific thing, and the probability of the prediction. There's also some starter guide thing for the Python coding environment, but I didn't check that out, or I didn't find any major changes. So that's why I can't say anything to that. But that was it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video and bye.